Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to make homemade bread. Um, I love homemade bread and it's easier than you think. And I know it's really intimidating to try to make homemade bread. So I'm gonna guide you step by step um, and teach you how I learned to make bread. And I have to give credit to my mom because she uh, would make homemade bread every single week, sometimes multiple times a week. I remember walking in the door from school and always having the house smell like fresh homemade bread and I loved it. If anybody can find a candle that smells like homemade bread, I'll be your first purchaser. But uh, anyway, I am really thankful for her for what she taught me and I'm gonna teach you the way that she taught me step by step. So let's go. Okay, so this is the yeast that I really, really like. You can get a big pack of it at Costco or Sam's Club, but I love this. It will last you forever. What I actually do is pour this into a container like this. Sorry, that's loud. And I actually store this in the freezer. So it looks like I'm almost out, I need to refill. But if you'll get your yeast, and put it in a container like this and store it in the freezer, it will stay good forever, at least a couple of years. Um, but it doesn't hurt the yeast, it doesn't do anything, it just um, preserves the life of it. So that is my very favorite kind of yeast. And you need the active dry yeast. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is get um, warm water. So. Think of it like warm bath water is about the temperature that you want. And we're going to get four cups. Okay, that's about right. A little bit warmer. Okay, go ahead and get four cups. Okay, after you get your four cups of warm water, you wanna get two tablespoons. Make sure there's no little clumps in there. One, two. Now here's the trick. If you want your yeast to blossom or get foamy, get a little bit of sugar. Sprinkle some sugar in there with it and that will help your yeast get really nice and foamy, but it won't change any part of your bread, the flavor or anything like that. It just helps this yeast. So just make sure that you mix that yeast in. So this um, quartz or granite or marble countertops are really cold. So if you want your yeast to get foamy, it needs to stay warm. So I put mine on one of these cutting boards or you can put it on your stove top or on a table in the sun, anything that helps it um, or prevents it from getting cold. And then go ahead and cover it. You can use a towel, a plate, whatever you need. Cover it, put the timer on for 10 minutes. Okay, now it's been 10 minutes. The yeast is nice and foamy. It has a layer of foam on top. Going to go ahead and add that to our mixer. You don't have to have a big fancy mixer. You can mix this by hand. Um, but I will say I love this Bosch. My mom had hers for like 35 years, still going strong. And I just love them. But you really don't have to have a fancy mixer. Um, mixing by hand will get you the same result. So go ahead and add that to uh, your mixer and then we're going to add one tablespoon of salt. And this is the pink Himalayan salt and I really, really love it. Then you'll add one third cup of canola oil. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, now this recipe calls for honey. And one little trick is to put your honey in after the oil. That way, because I need one third a cup of honey. So if you put it in the same measuring cup, it's not going to stick to the cup. It'll just pour right out. So one third cup of honey. This is literally the thickest honey. Okay. Then we're going to add our flour. So it calls for 10 to 12 cups, but we want to add it about half, so about five cups, mix, and then we'll add some more. So let's go ahead and add five cups of flour. Okay, now we're going to head to go ahead and mix this together. Okay. Now we have about five more cups of flour to add, but what I want you to do is add one cup at a time. So, there's one. Now see if you look, it's still like a shaggy dough. It's really, really sticky still. So let's go ahead and add another cup. This will be four. I'm just going to continue mixing this because it's still not quite mixed all the way, but I don't know if we're gonna need that last cup. We, we probably will, but let's go ahead and mix this a little bit more. Okay, now what you're looking for is the dough to come away from the sides of the bowl. 
and that's what it has done. It's not sticking to the bowl or anything like that. It's still slightly tacky to the touch, but not where it's sticking to my fingers. So I think we're good at this point. So that's what you wanna look at. Just make sure that it's not sticking to the sides of the bowl. It's not sticking to your fingers. And that means it's ready to knead. Okay, now we're just going to remove it from the bowl. You can get some flour on your hands as you're removing it from the bowl so that it doesn't stick. Now you're just going to knead the bread dough for about five to eight minutes. It's a good arm workout. So you just want it to look like this, where it's not sticky at all, not sticking to your hands, but you've worked, worked it, and you've been kneading it for about five to eight minutes or so, and it looks just like this. Okay, so now we want this to raise until it's about double its size. So take a bowl, a nice big bowl, because it's going to expand. Spray it with cooking spray. And then spray the top with cooking spray. You'll cover it with a towel, and then this is going to double in size. So it's usually about 30 to 45 minutes. Okay, so it's been sitting for about 45 minutes. And as you can tell, it's definitely doubled in size. This is what it should look like. Okay, this is my favorite part. So it's nice and big. And what you need to do is just punch it down. Get rid of all those air bubbles. If you've had a stressful day, <laughs> go ahead and take it out on your dough. Okay, and then take it out and place it on your countertop. While that's just kind of resting for a minute, I'm just going to get my pans ready. So this will make three loaves of bread. All you need to do is just spray your pans with cooking spray. Make sure you get all the sides. Okay, I'm just going to lightly flour the surface again. And just knead the dough just to get rid of that air that was in there. Now I'm just going to divide it up into three loaves. Trying to make even pieces here. Get it as even as you can. That's about even. Okay, so now I'm gonna set these two 
balls of dough aside and I'm going to work with this one. Now we're just going to lightly knead this just to get rid of any air bubbles. Add flour if you need because it might get a little bit sticky. So you're just wanting to get rid of any of those air bubbles in there. And we want it to fit in our pan right here. So once we roll it, you want it to be about that size. So go ahead and start rolling it as tight as you can. Add flour to your hands if you need to. Now see this right here? You're just going to pinch it together. And just roll it around to make a nice smooth top. Now I'm just going to pound it. And that gets rid of any air bubbles. And then go ahead and place it in your pan. You can actually hear the air bubbles pop every now and then. Okay, now just start rolling it tightly. the bottoms <laughs> roll it around get a nice smooth top and then pound it on the table. Okay, we have one more. Okay, now what you're going to do is just get some soft butter on your hands and just lightly rub the top with that butter. And just like with the, the yeast, make sure that you have it on a warmer sur surface other than this um, granite or quartz or any cold countertop that you have, make sure it's on a warmer surface. And then you're just going to cover again with a towel. Going to preheat the oven to 350. 
while our dough is rising. Okay, they've been raising for about an hour and they are ready to go in the oven. Now you're gonna put the timer on for 30 minutes. You want to take them out of the pans right after you take them out of the oven. Okay. Now I just get my butter, kind of take the paper off of it and just rub the tops. This will keep them soft and give it a really good flavor. I wish you could smell this bread right now. Don't be shy with the butter on top. <laughs> Put as much as you want on there. All right, there we go. <laughs> All right, so when you're cutting bread, you either need one of these serrated knives like this, but my favorite is to use a turkey meat cutter. I don't know what it is. Is this just for turkey? Is it for, I don't know. Anyway, I like this electric knife because it won't smash your bread. <laughs> Look how yummy. Thanks so much for watching you guys and I hope you'll know that it doesn't have to be perfect. You just keep trying and doing your best and that's what matters. Thanks so much for being here and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!